Hi, I'm John Van Gerpen. I teach at the University of Idaho and do research on biodiesel. Biodiesel is a fuel for diesel engines made by reacting a vegetable oil or animal fat with alcohol. With the right catalyst, the oil and alcohol react to make biodiesel and glycerin. The reaction is simple, so many people are using it to make small amounts of fuel for their own personal use. We are concerned that some small-scale producers are doing things that put themselves and their property at risk. We want to raise awareness of some of the hazards associated with small-scale biodiesel production and provide some safety tips. I want to emphasize that this video is not a substitute for experienced professional assistance. If you feel uncomfortable at all with the dangers involved in making your own biodiesel, please don't do it. Otherwise, one mistake could turn your home or shop into this. The chemicals used in biodiesel production are flammable and toxic. Here's what you should know about methanol. It's toxic. It can enter the body by breathing vapors, direct skin contact, or accidental swallowing. It's a cumulative poison, which means repeated exposure can be dangerous. And it's highly flammable. Symptoms of exposure include nausea, dizziness, headache, sleepiness, confusion, respiratory tract irritation, loss of consciousness, and blindness. Swallowing small quantities poses a significant health threat to the central nervous system and could also affect other vital organs. Repeated exposure to relatively low concentrations could cause harm in the longer term. Have the Materials Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS for catalysts and methanol, readily available at your job site. Here's what you should know about the catalysts, such as sodium hydroxide, that are used to make biodiesel. They are corrosive. They are fatal if swallowed. They burn areas of contact. They are harmful if inhaled. And they react with water, acid, and other materials. The catalysts are extremely corrosive. They can cause burning to unprotected skin and are particularly damaging to the eyes. If a mist or dust containing catalysts is inhaled, severe irritation of the respiratory tract and breathlessness can occur. Accidental swallowing can cause major damage to the throat lining and digestive system. Now that you know the hazardous properties of these chemicals, here are some tips on how to protect yourself and minimize risks. When considering proper personal protective gear, think in terms of covering the entire body. This means wearing coveralls or long pants and long sleeve shirts to cover your skin so little or none is exposed. Wearing a breathing mask that captures organic vapors is mandatory. Install a fresh cartridge regularly because a saturated cartridge won't provide protection. Wear proper chemically resistant gloves, not latex, as they will melt. A chemically resistant apron is also a good idea if you have one. A full face shield may seem clumsy, but it'll keep chemicals from splashing or spraying in your face. Keep a garden hose handy for washing skin and eyes in case of chemical exposure. Since fumes in biodiesel production pose serious health threats and extreme fire hazards, simply put, a closed processing system is best. This means closed containers connected with pipes to transfer materials. Ventilation is important. Methanol vapors are heavier than air and will collect along the floor if the workplace doesn't have good ventilation. Meters are available that measure vapor levels and alert you when safe levels are exceeded. Fire codes limit the amount of methanol you can have at a personal residence. Check with your local fire department for details. Methanol should only be stored in DOT, Department of Transportation containers, that are properly marked and tightly sealed. Always store methanol outside. Keep storage to an absolute minimum by only buying as much as you need for the batch of fuel you are making. The glycerol byproduct also contains some residual methanol and should not be stored. Check with your local commercially producing biodiesel plant as they may take this material. Ignition sources are not always as obvious as you might think. A light switch can make a small spark as it's switched on. This tiny spark is enough to ignite methanol vapors under the right conditions. 
Ordinary electric motors make small sparks during operation. Use explosion-proof motors to guard against this hazard. Inadequate wiring to run the electrical load of the equipment you are using can cause a fire. The National Fire Protection Association has codes for wiring and electrical equipment used in hazardous areas. Their website is nfpa.org. Use common sense when working around methanol. No smoking must be strictly enforced. Eliminate spontaneous combustion sources such as oily rags. Even the use of cell phones is not recommended. A refrigerator located in the area where flammables are stored is also a common fire hazard. No grinding or welding anywhere near this area or on drums that have contained methanol or any fuel mixture or even glycerol as any methanol vapors left over in the container can cause an explosion. We particularly want to emphasize the danger of working on tanks that have held methanol. There have been too many cases of biodiesel producers who were seriously injured or even killed when cutting or welding on tanks filled with methanol vapors. Hot work, such as cutting and welding, should be performed outside of the building. The plant should be designed so that tanks can be removed to a safe area. Tanks should be filled with water to displace the vapors. Use a trained welder with the knowledge of how to handle these hazardous situations. These tanks are too dangerous to take any chances. Methanol fires burn with an almost invisible flame that cannot be easily detected in daylight. Oftentimes the only indication that there is a fire are the heat waves rising from the fire. There is no smoke or soot. Use extreme caution and have the proper fire extinguishers on hand. Dry chemical powder, carbon dioxide, and alcohol-resistant foam extinguish methanol fires. It's a good practice to have more than one fire extinguisher on hand when making fuel and place them at opposite sides of the work area. If a fire has progressed, get out and get help. Call 911 and make sure any other people in the area are safely away from the fire. In the event of a methanol spill, make sure you are wearing the proper protective gear before approaching the spill. If the spill is small, you can clean it up with non-flammable absorbent or kitty litter. Dispose of the waste at your local hazardous waste facility. Be prepared for an accident and be prepared for fire. Have water and fire extinguishers on hand. Practice safe procedures and wear protective gear. Keep yourself and others around you safe by being aware of the dangers and taking proper precautions to minimize the chances of an accident.